All right, you know, I was going to really try to wait. I was really trying to wait to do this video, right? I was really just chilling, trying to see which fights were going to actually happen before I speak up on it because the heavyweight division is totally fucked right now with the sanction of bodies. Like, the sanction of bodies is totally ruining everything right now, okay? Something so simple is becoming so difficult. And this was, this was what sucks about boxing. You know, I see everybody... Making crazy YouTube channels, like YouTube channels, YouTube uploaders that going crazy over this whole thing. All right. So I was trying to chill and wait. Right. I remember when I wasn't doing videos and I found out that Wilder or Ortiz was going to fight or they were trying to work out a deal. I was very excited when I first saw it. But I knew that I, you know, I at, the, at that time that I found out, I... I said to myself, well, what happened with Stavern? Because wasn't he the mandatory? And then he really want to fight Deontay Wilder. But I didn't care because I was excited. I was like, my prayers have been answered. Deontay Wilder is going to finally fight someone that we all care about. Okay? So, then the next day happens. And then all these reports came out of Stavern taking legal action. He's totally against it. He's like, I want my shot. Why is Wilder, Wilder fighting Ortiz? You know, so then I said to myself, okay, why was this news ever delivered in the first place? All right, if Stavern still wanted his title shot, how would they go into Europe step around that whole situation right there? Why would they report that they're working on a deal to make a fight between Wilder and Ortiz if we know Stavern is the mandatory and he's supposed to be fighting Wilder next, right? Not that I want to see that fight. But I'm not stupid neither. Is that fake news or is it like what what's what's good with that whole situation? But I didn't make a video. You know why? Because I wanted to sit back and wait. Maybe they could talk to Stavern, maybe they could work something out. Maybe Wilder's willing to give up his title and pass it up to fight someone real. I don't know. It it would be I would respect him for it, but that's really not realistic. I, I wouldn't expect him to do that. I would respect it, but I wouldn't expect it from him. You know what I'm saying? You the champ, you work for that belt, you're gonna pass it over just to fight Ortiz. I doubt that would really happen, you know? Alright? And I'm not even asking. I ain't even I never even gone that far in saying that, right? So boom. That all kind of died out. Right? So now let's move forward. Let's eliminate Joseph Parker. Alright? And Fury. They're already scheduled to fight. So they're not in the mix of all of this right now. They're all over here on the side. Joseph Parker, yes, he has a title, but he's over there in the WBO, and he's over there chilling over there with his fight that's scheduled. So he's not in the mix right now, all right, because he been had this schedule, all right? They had to reschedule it, but we already knew way before even, I believe, the Klitschko and Joshua fight that he was supposed to be fighting Fury. So that's out of the way. Let's just remove them two, okay? Let's remove Klitschko. He's not in this no more. All right, he's retired. Shout out to him. I'll make a video on him, you know, a tribute video or whatever. But I'm not talking about him today because he's out of the equation. Let's get Tyson Fury out of the equation. He is no longer a top heavyweight. We should not even discuss him. He should be, you know, if he wants to be in the news for saying all these crazy things, that's on him. But we have nothing left to say about uh, Tyson Fury. He's no longer in the discussion of heavyweights because he is not boxing, okay? As far as I'm concerned, he's retired just like Klitschko is, okay? So let's leave him out of the question. So who do we have? We got Severn and Wilder. We got Joshua, Ortiz, and Pulev, okay? Pulev been the mandatory. Ortiz have been the mandatory for the WBA. He's pretty high up there on the WBC, but he got bounced too. All right, down to number two or whatever. All right, so we have Ortiz, we have Wilder, we have Joshua, we have Pulev, and we have Stavern. Now, this is the fan of me talking, okay? I already know that we have a bunch of businessmen, a bunch of people that's behind the scenes that want to make money. You know, this is why I think this, this whole, this is why I made a video before saying that uh, undisputed is impossible. You know, we got too many hands in the cookie jar. We have too many people involved in this. All right. Everybody want to make their money. It doesn't make sense how 
You have two mandatories at the same time if you're trying to become undisputed. How do you become undisputed? You can't because they're enforcing their mandatories over here in the IBF and in the, the um the WBA is doing the same with Ortiz. Okay? We all know that Joshua can't fight both. He just got the belts. He just won the belts. But we already know he can't enforce them. He can't fight both mandatories at the same time. He can't do it. He just can't do it. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, how does this all work out? Wilder, the whole Wilder Ortiz thing is weird because Ortiz and his manager, I was just reading an article on Box Scene, it seems like they're looking towards Anthony Joshua fight. I didn't see anything about Wilder there. All right. They don't seem that much interested in fighting Deontay Wilder, especially over Anthony Joshua when they earn that number one spot to do it, which makes sense. I mean, if you're the mandatory, you want to be able to get your shot. If you're not the mandatory in the WBC, does it make it really make it seem like it doesn't really make sense to go after Wilder if you're the mandatory right here? You're set to fight this guy right here, right now. All right. So if Joshua goes and really fight Pulev, he gets stripped. All right. Of the WBA, I guess. Ortiz goes and fights whoever for that title, all right? Whoever's under him, you know, whatever they do, however, however way they work it. That's not such a bad thing to me. I don't like that, but it's not the worst thing I've ever heard. I just don't get why at this point, at this very moment, and this is the one question I have. If Wilder was to fight Deontay Wilder right now, I mean, I'm sorry, if Wilder was to fight Anthony Joshua right now, right? If they said, you know what, let's fight each other right now, all right, what is the IBF going to do? What is the WBA and the WBC going to do? Are they going to strip Wilder and Joshua of their titles for not fighting their mandatories? Or because it's a unification match, all right, they're going to honor that and let these two fight, put these other guys on hold, all right, and let these two fight. Why can't we have that? You know? And if they are going to allow them and grant them that fight without being stripped, why can't either Stavern and Ortiz fight each other? Right? Why can't Stavern and Ortiz fight each other? I mean, they're both ranked right there in the WBC. So why can't they be in they why can't they be forced to fight each other for the winner of this fight? Okay. And then you have the IBF. We have Pulev. You know, I don't know where Stavern or Ortiz is ranked in. in I, I don't. I don't know. You know, I don't know. But I feel like this. Whatever way, who's ever willing to not strip each fighter, whoever's the one, whatever sanctioning body is willing to not strip these fighters, if not all three of them, whichever one. Work their ma magic and make this Wilder fight happen now so these guys are able to keep their titles. I, I, I don't really know because I, I'm just giving you an idea. It's very complicated right now. But let's say, if you guys get where I'm going with this, let's say the WBC and the WBA is said, okay, you know what? Boom, we're cool with that. We won't strip you. But the IBF says, no, you got to fight Pulev right now. Pulev has been waiting for two, three fights, whatever amount of fights. He has to get a shot right now. We're stripping you. Fine. Let him take that belt. Let him take that belt. Wilder and Joshua could fight right now. And on the undercar of that big fight in the UK, because that's what it would be, let's get Ortiz and Stavern fighting for that next spot. Okay. Maybe that's a possibility. So then Pulev could go do his thing over there on the IBF, could fight whoever's ranked under him that's next up for a mandatory shot, fight him, beat him in an eliminator, okay, If if or lose or whatever, fight for that IBF, whoever the IBF champion is, they can unify with Joseph Parker, Fury winner, okay? 
so we can try to get all of this cleared up. And then the winner of those two fights could fight the winner of Wilder and Joshua. So everybody can be happy, okay? You know, it's just the way it's mixed up right now, no one can keep a title. The, 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 yo, the sanctioning bodies are ruining all the good possible fights. At the same time, it's not, they're not only ruining, but they're giving the best, the fighters, the top fighters excuses to fight other guys that we don't want to see them fight. You know, because I'm looking, I'm, I'm paying attention. I was going to do a video on this, right? Because I was going to ask y'all. I was going to make a video. Who do y'all think is better between Pulev and Ortiz? Right? I was going to do a video on that. I said, I'm not going to go waste the time on that. Y'all can just answer that in the, in the comments. Who do y'all think is better? Because if we remove the fact that Pulev lost to Klitschko, Pulev has a way better resume, you know? And he's better defensively. Ortiz is obviously more dangerous. He has the bigger punch, you know? But Pulev definitely fought twice as many good follow, like fighters, you know, than Ortiz. Ortiz, he did stop Brian Jennings, you know? He fought Tony Thompson, like, kind of after Tony Thompson had, like, really fell off. Like, Tony Thompson's been old, but, you know, he's still kind of been relevant, you know? And I feel like Pulev fought him earlier, you know? Than the Tony Thompson that Ortiz fought. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Tony Thompson fighting Malik Scott and Luis Ortiz was like, he's old, but he's like way past his old. You know, he's way, 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 way too old. You know what I'm saying? Like, no one cares. He has nothing, he hasn't done nothing but loss, except for the, uh, that, uh, what's his name? The, the, the kid from the UK that he knocked out twice. The tall, the huge guy, whatever. You guys love him out there in the UK. I, I don't know why, but um, um, you guys know what you could say his name in the video. All right, um, but yo, all right. So I just, I just believe that everything is complicated right now, and I think right now, from what I'm seeing in the uh, the articles, if Wilder fights, let's say the Ortiz thing is true, if I, if Wilder fights Ortiz, it looks like he's gonna get stripped, right? If he doesn't fight Stavern. It seems like if Joshua fights Ortiz, he's going to get stripped by the IBF. If he fights Pulev, he's going to get stripped by the WBA. So let's see if we can get that fight going now. I mean, all the momentum is there to fight Joshua and uh, or uh, Wilder right now. The momentum is there. Out of all of the fights in the heavyweight divisions, that's the fight we all want to see the most right now. All right, now that Klitschko is out the game, now that Fury is out the game, okay, Parker's already scheduled for a fight. And Parker, he's not as big as, let's be honest, he's not as big as Wilder or uh, or Joshua. He's not as big as neither one of them. So let's get that fight happen going now so we can quit all this argument and quit all this blaming who on who. Let's, let's end that. Let's get this fight popping now. And let's see what's up with the sanctioning bodies. If they are they gonna still get stripped if they have this unification match? Because as far as I'm concerned, I always thought that if you have a unified unification match, you don't get stripped. I don't know if that rules apply to all of the sanctioning bodies or just maybe one or two of them or three of them. I, I don't know. All right. But those those are my questions. Can that happen? And if it can happen, if it if if they're gonna if they gonna if they're gonna sanction that fight between Wilder and Joshua right now without anyone getting stripped, regardless of who gets stripped after, because obviously obviously the winner of that fight or hold three belts and they can't fight all three mandatories. But what they can do is be realistic here and say, you know what, these three guys are waiting for title shots. Let's least let's try to make them fight each other in some kind of form. On the, on the card or whatever so they can be the next up for the winner of that fight let's have that you know and if case if it's a great fight between wilder and joshua and they press the rematch issue and they do rematch which could happen which is another thing that delays these fighters that they deserve their shots 
make another fight between them. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Big fights get rematches. We almost had a Klitschko rematch. It is what it is. Big fights get rematches sometimes. It is what it is. You know, that's part of the game. You know, if you agreed at some point to, to agree to step aside at one point, I believe Ortiz did at one point. Maybe he did. I don't know. I could be wrong. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe her just made a, a promise or something. I don't know. But if you agreed at some point to step aside for a fight, these are the things that can happen. All right. They could do a rematch, you know, or they could say, you know what? We can agree, like, let's have this all on paper before the fight. Sanction and Bali say, listen, if you have a rematch, we're stripping you. Now, if they say that before they have a rematch, then obviously they can't have a rematch. Unless these guys are willing to get stripped. That's a whole nother topic, you know. Are these guys willing to get stripped for these titles? Me personally, who cares? Because as long as I know who the top fighter is in the sport, it doesn't really matter. Neither one of the Klitschko's were undisputed because... One guy had three titles, the other guy had one, you know, and they both just tore havoc and they they just destroyed everybody in the heavyweight division while they both were reigning champions, you know. Historically, Klitschko brothers, they're going to go down as two of the greatest heavyweights ever, you know, especially in this era. So... Histor history has been, they, they didn't need to be undisputed. They didn't need to be undisputed. Floyd didn't need to be undisputed for people to say that he's the greatest or one of the greatest of all time. You don't need it to happen. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like these guys should focus on being the number one heavyweight. Um, and that should be the priority to me. But the sanctioning bodies is pretty much ruining everything. So they need to work with them and say, you know what? It would be beneficial if we just fight each other right now, hold our titles, okay? And then from there on, we'll move to there, you know, and, and we'll see what happens later. But you know what? It is what it is. Sometimes, yo, if you're the number one guy, you have to wait in line. All these guys, Ortiz, uh, uh, Pulev, uh, you know, all these guys, like uh, whatever, Stavern or whatever other guys that's there. I don't know, Pavekin, I know he's fighting again and hopefully he stays clean, but I, I don't know. All I'm saying is, historically, you had to wait your turn, okay? The next big guy, the next big star got his shot. You know, some fighters were ducked, but that's the way it should work. I think all of this other mechs and it, it, all of this other stuff is, is unhealthy for the heavyweight division. A division that, you know, a year or two ago, I thought was on the rise, was on the way of coming back. But all of this sanctioning body mess is making things more complicated. And it doesn't really have to be this way. Because if we just listen and like, listen, we uploaders and we're fans. We know what's really going on. The real debate is really between who's better between Joshua and who's and, and Wilder right now. Okay? Ortiz is right there. He's right there. You know, he's right there in the mix. But he doesn't hold a title yet. You know, and to some people, he's still not not he's he's not as proven as other boxers. You know, Pavekin was up there, but the whole Meldonium thing screwed him. You know, Pavekin was was it was no dispute that Pavekin was one of the best, if not the best, heavyweight up there, besides Klitschko. You know, and Fury, Pavekin had a better resume than all of these guys. Not too long ago, but now he has to build his brand back up because of what happened. All right. So we're looking at it like this. We should really just have Tyson Fury. I keep saying Tyson Fury for I don't know why. We should really just have Joshua and Wilder. I know I'm repeating it, but I got to keep repeating it. That fight should be right now. I know people are going to come and say, what did Deontay Wilder do? What did Deontay Wilder do? You know what? He didn't do much. And this is why I've always criticized him because he didn't really do much on his resume as far as his resume is concerned. But the thing is, he does have the WBC belt at the end of the day. He does have that title. Okay. And as far as the US right now, he's running things here. So let's not like, let's like forget your personal biases towards him because I'm dropping that, you know. 
people think it's personal with me. I'm just saying, like, I feel like he... Hold on. My, my beef with Wallace is I don't feel like he's representing for us like the way Joshua is representing for them over there. But I'm not including none of that. What I'm saying is, yo, let them fight right now. This would end the whole thing. You know? So anyway, let me know what you guys think. Um, That's my thoughts on how things currently is right now. Until we find out what happens, what fight is going to be, what, I don't know. All I know is that, do I care to see Joshua fight Pulev like that? No, I don't. I don't really care. But there's a lot of Pulev fans that follow me that subscribe to my channel from way back when I did prediction videos for him way back. And there's a lot of people that think Pulev is that dude in the heavyweight division. Up until he fought Klitschko, I, 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 there's a lot of people that thought Pulev was going to win that fight. You know? So I'm not speaking. I, I, I got to speak for them too. They might really want him to get his shot right now. You know? But from what I mainly see, I see Joshua versus Wilder more than anything. All right? Even Ortiz. I see Ortiz more than Pulev. I do. I'm not going to lie. I see... More Ortiz arguments and him wanting to fight Joshua or Wilder than I see Pulev. Pulev is kind of like in a cut, just like Joseph Parker. He seems to be that one champion that seems to just be getting a pass and he's just on the sidelines chilling. I do notice that, regardless of how I what I've said in my videos. All right, so anyway, I'm out. That's it. Um, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.